four years with 15 members of David Bowie's band. So everybody from the pianist, from Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars, to the um, guitarist from Diamond Dogs, the sax player from Let's Dance, all the way to the flute player from Black Star, his last album. So it's really quite, a lo quite an incredible collection of talent. And it is a proper musical, <laughs> and it has a villain and a villain song, and, uh, and I would have thought that after working for four years on this, on what is really truly my magnum opus, I mean, I've honestly never worked harder on any one thing, and I'm a hard worker, so it's really, I was a stop motion animator, so that's saying a lot. Um, I really would have thought that I would not be making more music for at least a few years, but I am, as you pointed out, already working on the next album. It is a short album. It's probably only eight songs, and my fiance recently pointed out to me, that's a full-length album. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, I just did a 20-song one, though. Um, so, and it is a Halloween album. Technically, it's Halloween. It's called The Last Halloween Party and Other Holiday Hits. So there's a couple of Christmas songs on there as well, as well as a song called Bunny Apocalypse about Easter that I wrote many years ago that's been on the internet for a, a while but never had a true recording. And I'm hoping that that is going to be out in time to be enjoyed by Halloween. And if I don't get it out in time, then there will be some, at least some, some part of it, like three or four songs from it. I go back into the studio the minute I leave Dragon Con with Bowie's drummer. So like now that I've like worked with people, I'm just like, they're just the band now, you know. So Sterling Campbell, uh, Bowie's drummer, who recorded all of the songs on Black Labyrinth, is coming into the studio the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th to record all the drums for the record. And then I start working with some of Bowie's guitarists. So I'm really, try, really not trying to have this be another Bowie tribute album. But it's starting to shape up like it might be some of the same musicians. That's, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. And I guess uh, to get in a little bit of detail about the album, there is a song called It's Always Wednesday, which I've been playing at shows, which has been, you know, people typically don't get super excited about the new songs because they don't know them. So while they might be singing along to their favorites and they're clapping along, mm -hmm. when you play a new song, people kind of stop and take a step back and they look kind of serious because they're analyzing what they're hearing. And that has not been the case with this song, It's Always Wednesday. People, after one chorus, start to sing along. And the minute I drop a line that says, I guess our daughter's an Adams after all, they suddenly realize after like a verse and a half that it is in fact about Wednesday Adams, <laughs> and people get very excited. So I think the excitement of the Wednesday series is, has been certainly very infectious. It inspired this song. And a lot of people seem to really dig it. There's another song on the album called The Skeleton Dance, which is very much like Cab Calloway style, 1930s big band kind of feel. Um, and uh, and yeah, I'm trying to keep it. I'm trying to keep it Halloweeny. So I have a certain number of Spotify followers, and I'm going to say, let's say, average is 160,000 a month, which is pretty good, but it doubles the month of October. And I cannot believe that it took me 25 years to realize that I'm a Halloween musician. <laughs> I honestly had no idea. So I've somehow never made a song with the word Halloween in it. But nonetheless, my, what do you call it, uh, not viewership, but listenership yeah. increases 100% around the Halloween season. As people start to rediscover my music and they add, say, songs from that I did for the uh, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, the Cartoon Network show, they add those to Halloween playlists. Um, they add my song The Night. They add my song When You're Evil, Cannibal Buffet, Zombie Prostitute, Raised by Bats. All of these songs that have kind of like a dark... Um, themeology, is that a word? Yeah. Or dark <laughs> themes to them. Get added to Hollywood playlists, and I, you would think, because around November, those numbers like plummet back to normal instantly. Like the minute Halloween's over, I'm forgotten about by 50% of my listenership, and I'm 1,000% okay with that because I love the idea. I'm such a lover of Halloween yeah. that I absolutely love the idea that people associate me with Halloween. Now, there's, of course, the 
diehard fans, and they listen all year long, and Cthulhu bless them. But I really, really just love that there's all of these people who suddenly think of me when they think of Halloween. And so I'm going to really pump the gas on that. Not the brakes, but the gas. I'm going to put the pedal to the metal. I'm going to make a Halloween album and make sure that people understand that I make Halloween music. We start Halloween now. Dragon Con's our kickoff. So. Well, that's, that's, that's quaint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you because Halloween in, at the Lara Voltaire officially starts in April. And that's true, really, because first of all, April is around halfway to Halloween, yeah. mm -hmm. so we will do halfway to Halloween episodes. I have a show called Gothic Homemaking. Oh, yeah. We might get to that, um, and we, we'll do halfway to Halloween episodes. We do halfway to Halloween parties. There's a lot of Halloween-inspired things around April and May. Then we get into Summerween, and we absolutely will celebrate the Summerween, which is now a holiday, too. But in June, believe it or not, as somebody who reviews Halloween home decor, June is when it starts to come out in the stores. And a lot of people might find that horrifying, almost as horrifying as hearing Christmas music in August. But we love it as, as people who wish it were Halloween all year long. Right. At Home is a chain that puts all their Halloween stuff out in June. By July, the Halloween offerings are in Home Goods and Home Scents. By late July, early August, they're at TJ Maxx, Ross, and uh, what's the other one? Marshalls. Marshalls, thank you. <laughs> and, you know, by the end of August, Michael's, Joann's, and then by September, Pottery Barn. And at that point, everyone has put out their Halloween stuff. So for us, the Halloween season starts in April, and it is going full force until October 31st. And then we cry <laughs> and wonder when it can get started all over again. We we don't well at the Lara Voltaire we decorate the the so as you may know I have a show called Gothic Homemaking I was very well, you know I've been working on this show for about seven years um, it's a labor of love it is a YouTube show no one pays me to make it and I probably spend more money on it than I will ever see uh, you know from it. But I was very, very lucky in that last October, the New York Times wrote a story about me in the show, and they referred to me as the Martha Stewart for Macabre Homemakers. And once they did that, there was suddenly a lot of eyes on the show and a lot of interest from people like Joanne and Michaels and you know, a lot of people who may not have noticed me before took notice. I signed a book deal with Quarto, and I'm releasing a gothic lifestyle Halloween decorating book, Halloween of 2024. Um, Congrats. Thank you, thank you. So, if you watch the show, you'll know that I buy a lot of my home decor around Halloween, but our philosophy on the show is not to decorate for Halloween, but rather to use the excuse that that's when you can find all of this stuff to find the things that don't scream Halloween. Mm 